Welcome to the tutorial, Importing Symbols and Templates. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the various ways to import symbols and templates. So to begin, let's look at the Anime Pro Library, and let's bring in a template of the Karate Rabbit. So even though these libraries are locked, um, you still have the ability to drag and drop templates from them. You just can't edit the templates or add templates to these libraries. So let's take the Karate Rabbit full profile, and once you select it, you can drag this template into three places. You can either drag it into the camera view, the left side of the timeline view, or the right side of the timeline view. And no matter where you drag and drop this template, it'll always be centered in the camera view. So like that. So I mentioned before you could drag this template and drop it into the right side of the timeline, but you can only really do this when the structure of the two templates are identical. So say for example you have this profile the rabbit and you've done a bunch of animations on it and you've keyframed it. It's going to extend the exposure here. And then all of a sudden you remember that you have an action template with a walk cycle or something useful that you could use so that you don't have to re-keyframe it. Well, that is an instance in which you could drop a template into the right side of the camera view. Um, all of these templates that we created in the end of the rigging tutorial will work for this. Um, so let's just take, for example, the front head of the rabbit. So this isn't an action template, but it'll still work on the same principles. I'm just going to uncollapse the master peg by taking it from the library view, clicking and dragging it, and then bringing it into the right side of the timeline. And as I scroll down, you'll see that a green circle with a white cross appears. And that's the software letting us know that it's found an identical structure um, where it can drop the template. So the, the template it's about to drop, the place it's about to drop it into, have the same structure. So I can release my mouse. You can see that the head has appeared. Um, it's also good to change these keyframes into stop motion keyframes. And then sometimes like a small amount of adjusting has to be done, so maybe something like that. But it's as simple as that. Um, instead of having to go through and individually um, swap all the elements of the head using drawing substitution, so you'd have to do it for everything, I think almost uh, maybe about 15 different parts here, um, it's much simpler just to drop in a template with everything preset like that. So symbols work a little bit differently than templates, and I'll show you how. I'm just going to delete this layer. So symbols can also be taken from the library and dropped into either the camera view or the left side of the timeline view. However, if you drop them into the camera view, then they don't automatically get centered in the camera view. They are dropped wherever your mouse is. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I take this black hair, which is the bun of a ballerina, and I drop it here in the camera view, you'll see it's off to the side here. But if I dropped it into the left side of the timeline, actually, so you can see them together, I'll drag these over you'll see that it appears here, which makes me believe that the character's head would be here and the rest of her body would follow suit. So when I say center, I mean put in a place where it would match up with all the other body parts um, as you may have built the character. However, this way of dragging and dropping into the camera view can be useful because if your ballerina was created into symbols with all of these at the center of the camera view, then putting them in the left side of the timeline view will have a big jumble in the center. However, if you're able to just drag and drop them, um, you can drop them all scattered and then piece them together um, without having that big mess in the middle. Otherwise, if you did build your character properly and then create the symbols in a way that when you drop them in the left side, the character will be built automatically, it's better to maybe drop them into the left side of the timeline view. So I'm just going to delete these. And we're going to now take a look at the way that templates that contain symbols are able to merge together. So I'm going to go into my library characters ballerina and I'll show you here that I have this character called the ballerina master. 
So she has the five poses that you would normally find um, for a character, the front, three-quarter profile, profile, three-quarter back, and back, that if you flipped around, uh, you could get a full 360 width. Um, and then she has two extra poses here. So if you look at her structure, it's what we would call, um, I guess, a mixed rig. Normally I'd say it was open because here all the body parts are not in a hierarchy. They're all just linked to the master. But if you scroll down a bit further, you'll see there are two sets of... Uh, appendages that are linked in hierarchy and those are her arms with the forearm and the hand for both of the arms. So in my bag of tricks I also have an action template called ballet dance and I'm going to drop that into the camera viewer so you can see what that looks like. So if we look at the ballet master or the ballet dance actually I just didn't rename the peg here and we click on the play button you'll see that it is in fact an action template um, with the whole series of keyframe movements and and just basically animation. So if we wanted to drop this template, this dance template, into the master template, it follows along the same lines. So here we have our ballerina group, the master template with identical structure. So I'm going to delete those and extend the exposure. So once again, if you created an animation with the master um, by keyframing the various arms and legs and what, whatever, and then at a certain point you realize you already have an animated dance sequence that you could throw into the mix, then you simply need to take it from the library view, drag it, and then bring it into the right side of the timeline view until you hit a point where the, the structures are identical. And, that, and they're identical here and not here because we're lining up the top, so we're lining up the master pegs. And so you can just release your mouse, and then it, what it does is it puts that dance sequence in the middle, right where you dropped it. So there's still one more place that I haven't talked about yet where you can drop a template, and that's in the network view. So let's get something like a background and drop it in the network view. And I'm just going to expand the network view by clicking in the gray area here and then by using the keyboard shortcut either control or command F once more to make it full screen. Um, so let's bring up the network toolbar and we might get rid of the advanced animation when we don't need it. There we go. Okay, so we just have these three. So this is our ballerina, it's in a group, we have our composite, and right now we have something that says no name, but it's actually your display. Um, I think it's because it came with the ballerina template and it was not renamed, but it should have been renamed ballerina display. Um, since it's our scenes display right now, I'll just name it display. And so when you drop a template into the network view, um, you'll see that you often have ports coming out if your template is a group, which it normally is because it's composed of several parts. So if we go into the group by clicking on this gray arrow here, you'll see you have a multi-port in, which was the little green note up here. You have a multi-port out which are these blue nodes here, so it gives the opportunity for those blue nodes to be shown. You have all your drawing layers and a peg. So because we dropped this into the network view and not into the timeline view, the software is assuming that we understand how to connect this to our composite so that it's seen in the camera view through our display. So I'm just going to go back to our regular view. And you'll notice as I attach each of these nodes to the composite, eventually they should show up. Oh, I think I know why. They're prob it's probably because, yeah, they are only extended to one frame. So if we go back to frame one, and as I connect all these nodes, all the single drawing layers inside the group are finally being displayed. And obviously there's some Z nudging issues um, so we can fix that really quickly by 
going to the master peg and then clicking the camera view and then just doing a quick alt um, and back uh, or the up arrow so that it'll be placed behind the ballerina. So that's the way that you would put a template into the network view. You can also preview symbols in the network view and I'll show you how. Let's go into the ballerina where we know there are symbols. And we know all of these actually are symbols, so all of these things that look like drawing elements are actually symbols. And you can go into them um, by selecting them and then either using the keyboard shortcut Command E on Mac or Control E on Windows. And that takes you into the symbol. So right now we're in the forearm and we also have a wrist patch as well. Um, and you can always go back by going to the top which takes you outside of everything, the ballerina, as well as the actual forearm group that we're in. So if we go back in, we'll see that there is a composite that's also set to pass through and a display uh, for that individual symbol. And it works very much like the timeline where at the top you can always go back to uh, your home um, or that if they're nested symbols, which I think this might be, let's check. Yeah, so the wrist was. So the wrist was also a symbol. Um, then you can go further into them. So then we have the wrist, and you can you can use this to preview what that looks like. So it looks like it's just a little patch. Um, and you have your composite and your display, and you can go back up the hierarchy this way, like that. I'm not sure if I've ever showed you that before, but if you click on the gray arrow beside the yellow box, this is the yellow layer properties, this is a little thumbnail of what this drawing module or group looks like, and this is to get into a group. So same thing here, and to get into the group. So the next thing I want to show you is how you can open a template as a folder. So as I mentioned before, all of these templates are like little scenes and we've seen this when you edit a template it actually opens up the scene so if you want to take elements from a template without taking the entire template such as specific drawings or the color palette from that template you simply need to open it as a folder so let's find something in the karate rabbit folder from the animate pro library and let's right click on it and select open as folder and then we just have to click on this gray arrow beside it to uncollapse it to see the various folders that it houses. And these folders, or the structure, as you may have noticed, is identical to the folders that you see if you actually open your file, uh, the files folder. So that gives you an idea where these might be located. So for example, I already have these palettes in my list of colors. So we can see here the rabbit and the rabbit knight already exist, but if I didn't have them, I could always click and drag these into this list. Also, if I open up the, the elements folder, you can see that there are individual drawings in here. There are individual TVGs in here. And so I can bring these into the scene by creating a drawing layer and then selecting this and copying it and then pasting it here in my timeline like that so I don't need to bring in the entire template that entire head with the peg and all the various body parts and the palettes and etc I can really just take simple elements from this one folder so there's one last thing that I'd like to talk to you about and that's how to expand a symbol and what that means is how to take the drawings that are inside or encapsulated in that symbol and bring them out into the timeline. So let's look at the tutu for example. If we double click anywhere along these, this film strip uh, that belongs to the tutu layer, we can enter the symbol. And if we are inside the symbol, we can see that there are actually five drawings, one for each of the five views. Um, and although in this case they look fairly similar, sometimes they're very, very uh, different. So then if we exit the symbol by going back to that top link, 
and then going back to the tutu layer in the timeline. We just we simply need to click somewhere in this blue strip and then go to the top menu and select edit expand symbol or use the shortcut that's listed beside. So now if you've noticed a gray arrow has appeared beside the tutu and if we click on that to uncollapse the tutu we'll see that its drawings have been copied from inside the symbol and brought outside of the symbol and attached just underneath. And the software does this for several reasons. First of all we don't want our actual symbol layer to be deleted because if we've actually already keyframed on it then we would lose all that keyframing if we deleted this layer and just replaced it with its drawing layer. Secondly, it's attached um, to the symbol layer and we know this because of the hierarchy that exists here in the timeline because then if we key anything on this layer while this is collapsed the keyframes will also appear on the um, drawings below. So that's it for the tutorial importing symbols and templates.